Are we ready, Sandra? Okay. Good evening, and welcome to the Leon Valley City Council meeting. Today's Tuesday, July 16, 2019, and it's at approximately four minutes after six, and I'll call this meeting to order. We do have a quorum. All council members are present. Um, our city manager is out of town and on vacation uh, for the birth of her first grandchild and will not be here today. Although, will she be here for Skype? I couldn't remember. No, she will not be here. N the next meeting. Okay, very good. So, uh, would you all please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we'll begin. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, many of you all know just our little brief housekeeping rules. If you could please si silence your cell phones. And if you uh, want to talk to your neighbor, if you could please go outside into the foyer. And just please refrain from any outburst. Uh, I know it's sometimes... We get passionate. So, uh, yes, and silence your cell phones. Um, okay. Our local rules do allow for our citizen input at any point during our uh, agenda, not just for citizens to be heard. If you'll please wait until staff presentation, council discussion, and if you would like to add something, just raise your hand. I'll be more than happy to call on you. All right. I believe that's it. So uh, let's begin uh, under uh, agenda item number two, presentations. Uh, number one, both our uh, uh, fire chief and our uh, assistant fire chief are out on a call. <laughs> so we're going to have to be very, very flexible. And when they get back, we will administer the oath of office to both of those uh, gentlemen. So moving then to agenda item number two. But before I, I do that, I... I Miss um, Postley did come to me, and I think I'll go ahead and ask the council. Mr. Milan has requested that agenda item 8.4 be moved up uh, first under the regular agenda item before 8.1 because we will have our guest here, and I wanted to be sure that that was okay with the council. Is it after or before? I thought it was first. Mr. Milan, could you clarify that, please? I thought it was first. Be moved up to 8.1. Yes, that's right. So that would be the first agenda item. Yes, okay. thank you. Is that amenable to all of the counselors? Mm -hmm. All right, so then we will do that so that you could tell your, um, your guest. Okay. Very good. So moving back to presentation number two, uh, presentation of the monthly financial report ending June 30th, 2019. We have Ashley Wayman, our assistant finance director, here this, e this evening to present. Good evening and welcome. This better? Oh, good. Okay. That's much better. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Um, all right. Tonight we'll be going over the financial report through the month of June. Starting with our general fund, um, sales taxes were up this month about 3.26%, um, trending pretty well. Um, we also already have July's numbers, and we were up 2.95%, so looking pretty good um, in our sales taxes. Um, our ad valorem is, is trending, it's higher than it was last year at this time, um, almost there percentage-wise. Um, other than that, our expenditures all seem to be on track in this fund. Um, if there's any specific questions you all have okay. about any numbers. All right. Are there any questions for the uh, general fund revenue this evening from the council? 
All right. I think you've gone through and explained to us that the red light cameras and the impound lots is, is the revenues in the license permits, fees and fines, and that's why that's such a high number. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. And yeah, those make up um, a very large chunk of that number. And you'll see those later. Um, we have those two broken down. Mm -hmm. And will our franchise fees this fiscal year be impacted by the legislation or it'll just be next year? I believe it's next year. Yeah, next I don't year. think it Okay, because we effect. talked about that last meeting right. for the budget and just came to my mind. Yes. Okay, thank yeah, you. So we will take a little hit right. there. Um, moving on to our water and sewer fund. Um, water sales are up right now from where they were last year at this time, and uh, likely if it continues to be a pretty dry year, we'll probably see um, those numbers continue to rise. So um, our water sales are looking good, even though we also want everyone to conserve. So kind of one of those both sides there. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, um, all of our revenues seem to be coming in well in this department. Um, we are pretty high on our tapping fees just from all the new development um, that's been going on, so that's good news. Um, and our miscellaneous is up as well, just more customer penalties, um, things like that, just late fees, kind of that sort of thing. It just happens okay. to be trending a little high this year. Okay. Um, but other than that, our expenditures are on track as well. All right. In our community center fund, um, the hotel and motel taxes have not changed since last month. You'll see those next month. Those are quarterly, um, so those should all be in hopefully by the, by the July um, report for you guys. Um, our community and conference center rentals, um, though taking out the church numbers, they may not look quite as good, but they are trending at 75 and 85 percent. Um, respectively, so they're actually doing, they're actually on track even without the church rentals that we had in there. So um, those are looking good right now, mm -hmm. um, and our expenditures are on track. I, I did, this kind of just jumped out at me this, when I was reviewing it this afternoon. So we have revenue of 145.4, but our expenditures are 202.531, so it's over what we bring in. So will we do a, how will we cover that? There's a fund, yeah, there is a fund balance. There, okay, and we just don't see the fund balance here. Right. Okay, so we have yeah. a fund balance that will cover that expense, so it'll be uh, right. covered. Yes, okay. ma'am. And it we is will. something that we hope, you know, as we are able to fix up the centers a little bit, maybe our rentals can mm -hmm. hop back in and take mm -hmm. over more of that. But um, as of now, that's what we have. Okay, right and w approximately how much is the fund balance in this community center fund? I'm just, because we're, sh uh, we're about, you know, 55, 60,000 short. It's, it's around, we estimate at the end of the fiscal year, fiscal year 19 is going to be 80,000, but by the time we get to next year, it's zeroed out. Oh, so this so will be the last remember, year. remember what we did with that is we mm -hmm. paid off the tax participation notes that we issued to build that conference center, mm -hmm. and that ate away a huge portion of that fund balance. Mm -hmm. So this year we'll be able to, to um, cover this yeah, next with year we're going to have next to watch year. it really, really close. Okay. Yeah, we th we're watching it close this yeah. year, but next year we, we are showing in your budget document a zero fund balance. Okay. Because she's going to do some uh, upgrades to the center. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you pointing that out. All right. Um, our economic and community development um, again, part of the general fund, but it's just broken down here so you can see it separated out. Um, sales tax is about the same in the, as it is in the general fund, two months behind, up 3.26%. Um, so we're looking good there. Our expenditures seem to be tracking well. Um, and you'll notice we do show the litigation reserve in there now, but we still have not received um, the 79125 deposit extra. So we're still waiting on that as far as also I know okay. you, Denise. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Mayor and Council, we're, we're just, I, I've contacted them on a weekly basis, um, two or three times a week. Um, I don't get any response, so I don't know what else to do. Okay. I've contacted them by email and phone, so... I mean, I just keep being told it's it's being processed. Okay, so and that's the district clerk's office, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, and then coming out of that contractual, we do have our ED project funding in there. Um, there is one new item from this month, and it was the UTSA Public Administration. Um, I believe that was for their, their TCMA conference T-shirts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think something um, relating to them. And then we still have the Office Furniture Liquidations in there. 
and Amiga Cafe, and there will be more coming next month that we've already kind of started. Okay, but we've actually only spent 13118 for the we've, fiscal year? Uh, we spent 11151 okay. in ED project funding. It just okay. comes out of contractual. Okay, so. right. But we budgeted 213138 so we still have quite a bit that we could spend right, on projects. Yeah. Basically, yeah, basically kind of whatever's left at the end mm -hmm. is all pretty much devoted okay. to projects. Very good, thank you. Um, our red light cameras um, for the month of June um, are tier one, which is what we account for and report to the state. Um, everything seems to be on track in that fund. Our contractual does include nine payments to our vendor, ATS. Um, our revenues are you know, above where we had budgeted, so um, those are looking good. Um, we just do need to keep in mind that that's not necessarily money we keep. Um, it's used for the administration of the program and then split with the state um, in tier two. Um, other than that, our expenditures in tier two are also on track if there's any other questions. Okay, very good, thank you. Any questions from the council on the red light camera fund? All right. And our impound lot. Um, not a whole big story to tell here. Um, our fees and auctions are running about at budget right now. Um, auctions are, are closer to, to budget. Um, and our expenditures are all on track in this fund, so. So how many more auctions do we have this fiscal year? Because that, that number will go up then, right? It on will. The budget. I know we have one on more coming up very Just soon. Just one more for this fiscal year? Trying one or two. Every other month. Every other month. Mm -hmm. So we have about four months left, right? Right. So three months, so July, August. One, okay. maybe two. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that may go over what we've budgeted, but. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but likely. Okay. Yes. Very good. All right. And just a reminder that this and other reports can be found on our website, uh, Finance, Financial Transparency, and then you can see all the reports. Excellent. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And then are there any questions from our citizens? If you'll please come to the podium and state your name and just where you live, Leon Valley, San Antonio, Halotus, just a general, that would be great. Yes, ma'am. Last week. And your name is Johnny. Oh, sorry. That's you okay. Just told me. Johnny Garrett. Okay. Leon Garrett. Valley. Okay. Very good. I thought last meeting we had a financial report and I had questions from that and I wanted to ask. Um, she, when she read it off, she, I thought she meant 1,200, 125, but it's 12,500 for a light table for the city plans. What oh, that's size the budget. Is that? Yeah, that's the budget. Well, mm -hmm. the budget for the light table. Yeah, that's for next year's budget that we that we talked about. I believe the fire department and the community department. We're both going to get this table that they could put their plans on for 12,500. But that's so. for one table. Yes, it's, go right it's, ahead. Um, electronic, so they mm -hmm. can actually send plans to and from who, people who need to review it. It's not a table, it's a big, like a, it's a device, it's a screen. Okay. Um, it's interactive. Oh, okay. Can, yeah. Well, it sounds yeah. nice, but is, mm -hmm. is Leon Valley that big? I mean, that's something like Dallas or Houston would use, I would think. Yeah. Does, San, does Leon Valley need something like that? Well, the departments usually express their needs, and so then we will consider them. Okay. And so we, we have well, a... it's your budget. And also, no, uh, it's, I had it's another our thing on the budget, and it was it's a small thing, but everybody has a budget, and if you cut unnecessary things, the last mm -hmm. on this charter book, mm -hmm. and I talked to Denise about this, uh, the last 26 pages are in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Does Leon Valley have non-English speaking residents here? Very certainly, how many how Think many so. residents do we have in Leon Valley that read English? I mean, I'm talking about if we need five or six copies in Spanish and they get a copy in English for Spanish, contact our office or something, but I don't know what these things cost to mail out in print. Mm -hmm. For how many residents do we have in Leon Valley? Somebody is, ought to know. Yeah, what is, I just know our population number, but is it about 3,000 homes? It's the registered voters that receive each registered voter. Oh, so that's going to be 7,500. No, that's 7,500. Yeah, it's whatever. I don't 
Yeah. Each registered voter got a copy. So if I have... Okay. So what if they're not registered? They wouldn't get that book? Is that Correct. Um, but we make it available online. Okay. Um, we we put, post it everywhere. Okay. But again, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Denise, if I well, remember Well, it, it's supposed to go out to all the citizens of the city. Okay. So um, that's what the election code says that, I mean, or not the election code, but the local government code said that it, it's it supposed out. to go out to all the citizens in the city of Leon Valley. Um, so uh, it doesn't specify whether they're registered voters, voters, voters okay. or not. So maybe I'm mistaken and it got sent out to everybody who would have voted. We can get that clarified for okay, you for but sure. But it does not have to be printed in Spanish. I believe it does. No, it doesn't. It doesn't? I, I thought it did. I called Denise okay. today and I asked oh. for a House bill or a Senate okay. bill or legislation session. Good to know. Session. And did you get to that? Today? Um, well, I looked it up. And there's no requirement that it that the charter itself be in English and Spanish. Um, it just needs to be sent out to all the residents of the city of Leon Valley. Um, but what happened was is that uh, the former city attorney uh, Charlie Zeck um, um, gave instructions to send out the charter that they have created in 2014 to be sent out in English and Spanish. And so Not that was fine. just carried through um, from what I understand. So um, no, it's not required, but I, I'm sure it's just a courtesy to the citizens that don't speak they, English. I don't have any problem with that, but we could print on it if it went to their resident, if there's a registered voter, you know, send it to them. If you need it in Spanish, contact us okay. to, to print all those copies and mail them the postage on them. It it's adds very up. expensive. You know, yeah. I have to watch my budget, and okay. I'm sure y'all should. And that's something that should be done. All right. Thank you so right much. Things. I appreciate that. And we'll be talking more about that budget item in Thank the you. August 6th meeting when we take up the budget again. Thank you, Ms. Garrett. Yes, Mr. Riddle, good evening and welcome. How are you this evening? Oh, right. How are you? Good, good. Is it on? Yes, that's right. We do need to. This is not citizens to be heard yet. This is just on yeah. what you just heard right. on our finance. Oh, so if you okay. have a question uh, for well, that. Well, yeah, I was Philip Riddle and I'm on Ruth Sophie. I just had a, a. As far as the city employee pension, is it fully funded normally through the year? Now that I don't. Vicki, you're going to have to help us out here. I know we've got it in, we, we, we. Yes, we the, the, it, our pension fund, which is through Texas Municipal Retirement right. System, is funded for a full year. The rate changes January 1st of every year. Oh, mm -hmm. good. Yes. You sure? Yes. I, I'm sorry. I, Patrick. I'm sorry, Mayor and Council. I do have a correction. It is to the registered voters, not to all the citizens. Thank you, Crystal. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Interesting. All right, thank you all very much. Any other questions on the finance report this evening? All right, well then let's move on then to um, agenda item number 2.3, receive a presentation and provide feedback regarding a potential mixed use development on approximately three acres, generally located at 6758 Post Road. And Mr. Smith, good evening and welcome. Our good chairman evening. of our zoning commission. Mayor, council, good evening. David Smith, chairman of the zoning commission. Like you said, uh, I'm very excited this evening to bring this item to you. Uh, apologize, I just got off work, so I have my notes so I can remember everything here. Um, the purpose of this item is essentially to introduce you, city council, to a potential future residential development on a three-acre undeveloped uh, tract of land. This tract is at uh, 6758 Poss Road, as many people may affectionately remember that as the town center area, which mm -hmm. I think we all can agree is kind of a dirty word now. So I like to refer to this as that spot behind the car wash. So, uh, and this is kind of for those who don't know, basically at the corner of Poss Road, Grissom Road, and Bandera Road, there's that kind of big empty spot back there, okay? So essentially, the, the developers, Mr. Shehadi, is here this evening to talk. He came a few weeks ago and presented, excuse me, a few months ago now, and mm -hmm. presented at a zoning commission to get our initial feedback. It was a fantastic presentation that he'll be presenting to you tonight. You know, um, 
you know, several options that they presented to us, but in a nutshell, the two that it kind of boiled down to was a townhouse development option or or we kind of leaned towards was a high density, multi-family mixed use development, very similar to what's kind of being developed around the Pearl area or UTSA area has a lot of that going on. Broadway is being kind of redeveloped that way. Um, you know, it was a very favorable feedback was received from the Zoning Commission, I believe. Um, and so now what we've done is we've asked Mr. Shehado to come back, kind of give an initial presentation to you, City Council. You know, we have not formally voted on this in the zoning. It's more of just a, let's talk about what some options are, what we can do, what are some good ideas for this property, and how we can improve our city even further. So without that further ado, I'll turn it over to Mr. Shehadi. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Shahadi, and welcome. Good evening. Thank you, David. Thanks for the introduction. Very kind. Uh, right. Well, first of all, thank you all very much for hosting us tonight. Uh, we were, there were supposed to be two of us. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, uh, my business partner uh, of 28 years, uh, we have currently a project in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, and uh, we have a closing of a large transaction that's supposed to happen tomorrow. So he sends his apologies for not being here. He was here for the commission uh, meeting, and uh, uh, he's, uh, he's a long-term friend, long-term partner. We're doing a lot of projects together, and we're very excited to present to you uh, some ideas about what we're thinking for this particular property. We did not come forward with uh, your typical approach as a developer. We believe in uh, a joint uh, thinking session whereby we come in with some ideas and then we solicit help from you based on your vision for this community. So we're always reaching out to the community that we're wanting to develop in and find that middle ground that fits with our objectives, but more in importantly, the municipal objectives for, for this particular area. So um, I would like to uh, uh, give you a little bit of perspective as to who we are. We're a small group, we're not a huge developer. We're, uh, I'm an engineer by education, uh, and Azim, my business partner, he's out of Toronto. I'm out of Calgary, Alberta, in Canada. We're both Canadian. Okay. Uh, and yes, what are we doing here in Leon Valley? That's a very good question. Uh, I have a love relationship with Texas. Uh, I've had place in Texas uh, for many, many years. Uh, started with uh, business uh, ventures in Dallas and uh, close friendships here in San Antonio. So that brought me here often. and. I uh, developed a liking for the, for the city. So about five years ago, as you we were looking at diversification uh, out of the Canadian market and capitalizing on the U.S. dollar uh, strength at that point in time, we wanted to move some money down to the U.S. and was the best thing we've done because our dollar ended up losing quite a bit of money uh, against the currency has, has uh, lost uh, quite a bit against the U.S. dollar. This is relevant because that's how the money came down and that's how we bought quite a few properties across the U.S. So one of them is this particular property, and uh, we bought it with a vision. We did a lot of research, uh, as we usually do before we buy. We, uh, and I will go over this presentation really quickly to tell you a little bit about who we are, but also why San Antonio, and some, share with you some of the market research that we have conducted and some of our target demographics. Um, so. In terms of who we are, we're experienced. We've done a lot of projects. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Could we lower the light so we could see it a little bit better? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I actually can't see that because I'm colorblind and uh -huh. uh, I have terrible vision. Okay. So <laughs> no, that's a lot better. Thank <laughs> so I'm you. Just fly by. We'll see how that goes. Okay. So that's why I have this thing here. So I apologize if I'm looking down as we're going through this. So. Uh, so we've done quite a few projects uh, across Canada and in the United States. Uh, this, this is a project here that's currently underway. We're about uh, two months from finishing the construction of this project. We have 17 high-end townhouses that we're developing right downtown Raleigh. Uh, they're approximately 2,800 to 4,400 square feet each. They're very large. Yeah, each one of them is about four story. Here you see three stories, but there's one in the back of this particular building. There are two buildings behind this, uh, each one with about five to, uh, to six units. Uh, each one has an elevator in it, uh, a super high end, mm -hmm. and it was destined for professionals in that particular market. 
we've sold uh, eight out of the, uh, sorry, nine, and we have eight left. So um, we're pretty much done with this, and we're excited about our next project, which is here in Leon Valley, uh, if we get the pleasure of getting your nod uh, as to how we proceed from here. So uh, second project is a project we've done in Toronto a few years back. Uh, so that's uh, also right, down, down, right downtown Toronto. Uh, we did a couple other townhouse projects in Toronto. I didn't uh, include any pictures. Uh, this, is, this presentation is the exact same presentation we gave to the commission. Okay. We did not want to change anything in it, even though we had some enhancements to it. We decided just to keep it whole so that we keep the integrity of the message. Mm. Uh, the next project here is an upcoming project. Uh, we bought 2,000 acres of land in Alberta, uh, just uh, adjacent to a lake about an hour southeast of the city of Calgary. Uh, it's a little bit irrelevant. Uh, this is a lot of farmland. We bought about four different farmers. And uh, our first phase is 432 lots uh, with a golf course. And uh, we have enough water rights for 1,600 uh, homes in that area. So uh, that's a little bit about some of, uh, some of who we are. Uh, if you don't mind, the next slide, please. Thank you. Why San Antonio? Uh, we have predicted a big growth based on a lot of conversations we've, ha we've had uh, as to which areas we wanted to pick to invest in back in 2014. Some of our predictions uh, came, uh, uh, came to light, and we we're very happy about that. Uh, San Antonio, New Braunfels uh, corridor uh, is the second fastest growing corridor in the U.S. in terms of development. So uh, we were looking at also the, uh, the income level in that area. And uh, we started thinking in terms of what kind of product could you potentially bring that would fit within those parameters, right? Next slide, please. So uh, we've conducted market research uh, and uh, that came out with the following uh, uh, results. Uh, our target market would be ideally professional single parents with one or more children uh, over or around 70,000 in annual income uh, or professional couples with no children. Uh, the purchase price, if we were to go down the path of a townhouse uh, concept uh, or a, any kind of a condo concept uh, would be around 250 to 300,000. Uh, we will show you a little bit later as to why this particular price point. If we were to go down the path of a rental property, we expect about 1.3 to 1.6 uh, dollars per square foot. Uh, one of the biggest attractions of this particular area to us is the proximity to the medical center. We believe this is a very underdeveloped area considering the proximity to, to the medical center. So our hope is that we'd be one of the first pioneers developing a project and hopefully continue on with more developments as we test this particular product in, the, in this particular market and geography. So uh, there's a big concentration of medical professionals right next door. We want to tap into that. Uh, professionals are becoming more trendy, as you see what's going on downtown. Uh, that's actually a trend not only uh, common to San Antonio, but we've seen it in Austin, we've seen it in Houston, we've seen it in Dallas, we've seen it in Raleigh, North Carolina, and all across the U.S. So we want to just leverage that, and if we can start a little bit of a movement here in Leon Valley that capitalizes on the, neighbor, the, the neighbors next door and give them a product that they would be excited about, then we're on the right track in our very humble opinion, and we need your validation, of course, if we're on the right track or not with that. So some data about uh, the medical community. If you were to look at a registered nurse in San Antonio, uh, the salary is about $70,000 average. If you look at uh, the banking industry and how much they would lend you, uh, if you're making $70,000, uh, you'd be looking at about $275,000 property uh, that's the qualification. So as we're looking at analyzing our, our market, we always look at affordability. And we believe uh, by developing a product that is affordable yet trendy, we should be able to capture uh, some very good interest. 
uh, you're familiar with this property. I'm not going to dwell too much on this, but when we, were, when we bought this property, we went through an analysis process, and I just wanted to show you the analysis process right here. Uh, so we looked at the, the, the proximity to the medical center. We looked at how much land is available potentially for us to expand if, we, if this works, uh, which we hope it does uh, with, with your help and par in partnership with the city. Uh, so that there's a lot of land close by. And uh, we looked at that vision of a town center. Mm -hmm. And we thought, maybe it would be one of the catalysts for something like this to happen. Maybe it would be like that first step. Uh, you know, it's been stalling for a long time. So uh, basically, we're great access, uh, as long as you're, it's not in peak hours. We're very familiar with uh, traffic issues. Uh, so I lived in San Antonio, just so you know, for three years. We conducted business in San Antonio, so I'm very familiar with this corridor. I drove it many, many times. So, uh, and I also understand that there would probably be questions around traffic impact. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to tell you in anticipation of that question, that we've done a little bit of research on that corridor and the traffic there. And it seems that 93% of the traffic going through this corridor originates outside Leon Valley and ends outside Leon Valley. So uh, very little impact is happening from the Leon Valley community on that particular corridor. So we were thinking, uh, we were struggling a little bit with how we would assess that in advance as, as we're looking at feasibility for this project. Uh, because our impact is going to be absolutely minute compared to what's going on around us. But this is something we can discuss uh, together and we're open to ideas as to what we can do to make this a uh, any concept we're proposing is a concept that allows for future uh, uh, is, is futuristic friendly is what we want to say because if we want to move down to a transit strategy that maybe the city of San Antonio implements uh, we want to develop a community that is ready for that okay so uh, so that's basically, that's again the same, uh, if we can move on to the next one, please. This is also something that was attractive as we looked at the ordinance uh, for the city. Uh, we saw that this, we were inside the overlay zone and inside the overlay zone, we basically are allowed by right to develop townhouses and lofts. But this, is, this will only work if we were to work together with city council and with the community. Uh, to make sure that we have a project that fits exactly within the vision. And we don't want to deviate from that. Right, next, please. Uh, let's skip that, please. Next. OK, so what's our goal? Our goal is to provide a little bit of a differentiated living experience. Um, so if we were to design something that is stylish, uh, where common social areas, something that uh, encourages active lifestyle, and uh, again, to provide a product that is in harmony with the neighborhood. Uh, next, please. So we came down to a couple of concepts that we wanted to present to you for your feedback. One is the concept of apartments, uh, rentals, and uh, honestly, you'll have to tell us what you believe your needs are for this community. As what does the community need? Would the community need apartment style uh, uh, accommodations? The other one is townhouses and lofts. So uh, this would be something that we're looking at with, uh, as we look at the next slide, please. We'll be looking at about uh, 112 thousand total square feet of living, living spaces. Uh, about 67 residential units, uh, averaging about 1,600 square feet. Average price about 275K. Uh, we'll be looking at a little bit of a gated community. We don't know what your appetite is for that. Uh, so if you tell us, hey, yay, nay, we'll evaluate with you what's the best, what's the best approach. Uh, we'll have a private road, one main one going through it, and a whole bunch of alleys where effectively you park your vehicle in the back and you have that promenade in the middle uh, between in each building. Uh, that's your access and that's your front, uh, 
your front porch. On top, we're looking at rooftop patios across the board for each unit. Uh, we'll have a jogging track, we'll have a common area on the right there that is green, uh, a little bit uh, of, a, of a pond area, uh, retention pond that serves purpose as well in terms of uh, stormwater. And uh, we're expecting a density of about three people per unit, uh, so that adds about 200 new residents uh, to your tax base. The next one when it comes to rental apartment uh, concept, we have evaluated a couple of options. This option here, uh, really high density, 162 units, uh, will require substantial uh, lenience on parking, right? So uh, otherwise we would have to uh, build a concrete structure for it that, to, that becomes extremely expensive. So however, uh, we can vary this a little bit and go with a little bit of a lower number of units, potentially around the 100 to 110, whereby we can use surface parking quite effectively. So uh, we just need to, to work with you and your department of, uh, of planning, Brandon and the commission, to make sure that uh, whatever we end up designing there will fit within budget as well as within within the vision. So a whole bunch of statistics there. I'm not sure if you have a copy in front of you. Or you're welcome to ask uh, any questions uh, on that. If you don't mind uh, moving to the next slide, please. It would look like this. It's uh, trendy. This is this is actually uh, based on a conversation we've had with uh, with Brandon and his team. And as we're looking at concepts, we came up with this concept jointly that actually uh, Brandon ended up drawing uh, and uh, with, with some of the vision for the city moving forward. Uh, so that's basically what it would look like or something along those lines. So now any one of these would require a little bit of a lenience in terms of code and uh, we, will, we will need to talk about that as to what is it that uh, if, if this is something that the city uh, would give us in terms of uh, uh, certain small variances we'll need, or is it a different approach that Brandon has been talking about that I will have him maybe discuss with you at this point in time. But I'm happy to take any questions. That's the end of my presentation. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Shahadi, what is the name of your company? Well, in this particular case... Yeah, I, I, didn't, I kept looking for it and I didn't actually, see Actually, you know what? We don't have a name for the company. Oh. Every project has its own name. For instance, in okay. Raleigh, uh, we have, uh, we named the company and the project The Saint. The Saint. The Saint. Uh, and we're, we're investors and we would start a new limited partnership uh, for every project for tax purposes. Mm -hmm. As such, we don't, we don't have an overarching company. We have our own holding companies that would be investors and put money into these limited partnerships for every single project. In, in Alberta, for instance, it's called Crystal Blue Developments. Crystal Blue Developments. Developments. Okay. Correct. So if you were to look at, uh, at the Saint, for instance, you'll see that particular project. So uh, okay. uh, for this here, we still don't have a name. Okay. Uh, it's sitting under a limited partnership called SDS Partners. But as we put a name to it, uh, we, will end up, we will end up with that particular name as the name of the company. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Uh, yes, I just thought that every... I just thought you had names to your business. We do actually. We do, we do. We do. So. We do have. An, we do have like our holding companies uh -huh. are, the, are the only common team okay. across the board. And so that's Crystal Blue Development. That's Crystal Blue Development is actually a project. Oh, it's a project. Correct. Okay. And so your holding company does that have a name? Yes, it's okay. called SDS Partners. SDS. Okay. Yeah. SDS so that's the current owner. Partners. Okay. Of Great. this I particular, just to... but you will not find much about it. It's a private entity. We'll mm -hmm. just keep it okay. pretty low key. Very good. I thought I saw in the paperwork that y you were also. D did I see the word mixed use? Yes. So I'm wondering why we don't have a like a business front. Oh, there is below. a business front. If, is if there? I didn't. Yeah. I didn't see that. Sorry. Okay, so if you'll point that out, yeah. I'm going back to uh, the next one, please. Next one. Forward, please. This one here. Okay, so where are All the, right. the so where is the business? I didn't. Here, do you mind if I was 
No, go right ahead. I, but you know what? We are recording you. So we have a pointer. So that if you'll go back to, yes, we need to keep it all. We have people online that are listening, so we need to get them to be able to hear you. So, yes, if you'll just use the pointer, that'd be great. Very good. So for this particular uh, plan that we're proposing, this one here, this is building A. Building A. Right, the front mm -hmm. of this building, just off password. So this is password there. The, the mm -hmm. front here is a uh, is a commercial front. Okay. Right. I, I so understand. if you want to look at at these particular parking spots, those parking spots are actually uh, for commercial use. The gate that we're proposing is right here. Another gate right here. If that makes sense. Okay. So inside of this, this is all residential. Okay. All right. right. That Thank you. Sense? I appreciate. Yes, yeah. I, I'm really much. glad that you you um, uh, that you pointed that out. Um, I agree with you that the impact of any development we put there is going to impact Bandera Road, uh, sure. coming and going. Beca and we also have another larger apartment complex. I don't know if you knew that right outside of Leon Valley. Yes. Past. Three hundred units. The left. Yes. yes. And so, um, it's it's. You know, it's something we have to deal with. But I didn't know if you knew that right there on Post Road, there is a bus from Via that goes there and goes directly to the medical center. Actually, if we, we could know that. With it's them. like right outside yeah, our property. Yeah, it's right outside. And we love that. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the main mm -hmm. attractions. Mm -hmm. That I, I believe I may have included that in, in one of the slides. Maybe I, I didn't. Maybe I omitted to do that. It's but ideal. When, when I drove by mm -hmm. and I saw that bus stop mm -hmm. and I saw that piece of land, Mm -hmm. After all we've heard, I went ahead with it. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, that bus right. stop was actually a trigger mm -hmm. for us, for our decision. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a, a good way to reduce the traffic if we can get people on the bus to get to the medical center. That's exactly right. Um, it also goes to UTSA. It sure does. And it can go a direct line. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it splits off at the medical center and goes up and then, yeah, it goes back downtown. But you, the, the hub is the medical center. Yes. And that's who you're trying to attract. Exactly right. Correct. Okay, so the Primo bus. And you said your private holding company is the financier? That's correct, Okay. Yes. And then, um, I know I get this a lot, and um, but we did have another development right down Grissom Road that we had approved. And is there any um, plans for, um, for changing the development in the future to accommodate, uh, you know, people with lower income or no? No, like at this point in time, mm -hmm. this is our first project. Yeah. Uh, we have, we want to work with the city. Mm -hmm. We want to understand your needs. Honestly, we're not smart enough to come up with, uh, with what is the best for the city. We're open. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to do this first project as a test pilot. After that, we, our intention is to do more. Okay. We just wanted to get the first experience and see how it goes, mm -hmm. if that makes sense to you. Sure. So we're open to ideas. Okay. Absolutely open to ideas. Very good. Okay. I want to ask my colleagues for their input, and uh, Councilman Braja, we'll just go around the table. How's that? Yes, go ahead. Um, yeah, thank you for your presentation. It's very well thank put you. together. Um, if you were to do this um, example here, how many um, businesses would go into that section A? Do you have an idea? How yes, many? it'll be it'll be uh, 3,500 square feet worth of. So it'll be, if we wanted to have medical uh, professionals, for instance, maybe a doctor, or we could we could have two to four potential businesses in there. Businesses in the front. You got it. Okay, and then you kind of showed two different concepts: one with the townhouses, lofts, and then the other with the rentals. Yes. W which way are you leaning? W what do you? is better we actually believe both of them uh, from an economical perspective both of them make economical sense uh, and it just where's your appetite uh, we're totally open to to either one yeah, yeah. thank you thank because you. it's not it's not excuse me it, it's not <coughs> just about the economical returns it's <coughs> what's going to work and what's going to fit within the community from a long-term perspective yeah we may make a little bit more money in one uh, particular scenario but we're not interested in that differential right now it's it's not big enough for us to lean one way or another okay yeah thank you for all right councillor martinez i personally prefer the townhouse model it's more stability 
people are going to be buying them. They're going to stay around longer. And it gives our community more stability. Uh, the second thing, I like your fact that uh, San Antonio, New Brunswick, is one of the fastest growing areas. And I can see in the future that San Antonio, Austin, is going to become one metro area, <laughs> just like uh, you refer to uh, Dallas-Fort Worth metro area. It's not going to be long before it's going to be referred to as the San Antonio Austin metro area. It's all, it's almost filled in between the two cities. Yeah. So you have a good vision there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Alcazar. On your your first um, part, where you said there were going to be almost 168 units or something like that, yeah. was was that the lofts or the rental property? That's the rental property. Okay, so the lofts would be the 110? Uh, no, the lofts will be uh, the 67 uh, units. Uh, As in, you're, you're thinking about the townhouses, right? The, That's the 67. 67, yes. okay. Yes. So um, I too, like uh, Councillor Martinez, would prefer the the townhome lofts. Um, I think that's more needed. And right down Grissom Road, we have two other uh, fairly nice apartment complexes I th that are recently built, one especially very recent. Um, and I think townhomes, especially in that area, would be particularly good because it's also uh, potentially a walkable area to other parts and hopefully with our future development on Pandera Road. But I personally would like to see the lofts rather than apartments. I don't think we need any more apartment complexes. Um, so my concern would be a little on the height of them. I guess that's part of what your possible variance is on. And maybe Brandon's going to talk about how we reach that. Yes, like currently, uh for that particular scenario, uh, we're looking at three story high. Uh, so that's within. But you want the four story. We would like to have the fourth uh, as like a small area to be able to access the rooftop. Maybe like a little sitting area, a little bedroom. But the majority of the top will be a rooftop uh, patio. Right, but to get to the rooftop, uh, you need something, you need to be able to get upstairs, and you need some landing area as well, potentially of a little bit of a funky little area for the kids or, uh, you know, or, or a little office, uh, home office, something along those lines. So that's, it wouldn't be a various... full four story or you're, you're thinking? Right, no, not, not, no, absolutely not. No, we'll be looking at just like a small area where we can decide what that is with you, uh, maybe a couple hundred square feet just to allow us a chance to put something that gives us And that us would be for access. each unit? That's correct, yes. Okay, because so you don't have any provision for, like, even a pool, it doesn't look like, for... So we're looking at that first building in the front. Mm -hmm. We're looking at a top area that is a common area, like the top floor being common area. And we're actually looking potentially at, at a rooftop pool as a concept as well. Uh, and we evaluated cost on it. We believe it's feasible. Uh, so we just need to work with the city to decide if this is something that we we uh, w we like it. We believe it's feasible financially, like in terms of economically. So uh, we're definitely wanting to do that. And what about a rooftop bar? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of bar are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you know what? That's it's, it's, it's for the yeah, like for the community, for the community to use. It's strictly for community use is what we're looking for here. But if you for believe the, there's a commercial for the use for residential the residential community, yes. Okay. For the residential community. All right. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate you coming, and I have a Canadian brother, so I have some interest in Canada too. So. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Rodriguez. 
Um, thank you for your presentation, and I think Mr. Bradshaw already took care of it. I was asking about the, wondering about the commercial space in front. Okay, very but good. That's answered. Councillor Charles. I agree with uh, Councillor Martinez. I would like to see the lofts. And as you know, uh, Brandon's probably already told you, right beyond that, there are two apartment complexes and another one being built at, as we speak off of Timber Hill. So we have a lot of apartment complexes in the area, but nothing of this quality for no townhouses or lofts. So I would like to see it in, in, in Target professionals because we do have a number of them living in in my subdivision and I don't want to lose them <laughs> to your loss but um, they're they are out in this area that work for the medical center that's good feedback thank yes you. thank you thank you uh, just another follow-up what um, if, if we were to go with the lofts what variances do you need in order to make the lofts I know you said something about parking but I thought parking was with the apartments not with the lofts yes, did I so misunderstand Right. Let me let me. Uh, if if this is the, uh, the seems to be the preference going down this path, there there are uh, m minor variances that would be required. The first one is around height, so that we the can height. we can okay. get we can get that fourth floor landing area uh, because currently it's not allowed by court. Number two will be uh, the width. The, the road. Uh, Currently, there are definitions around, is this an avenue, is this a street, is this, depending on which definition the city uh, decides that is, this could be a huge requirement uh, for much wider road coming into the development. We're looking at it as a private access, private access. right? Okay. Uh, which is, we're hoping that we will get the 28 foot or maybe like 30 foot uh, road that will allow in and out and we're hoping for those alleys to be around 20 feet wide which is fitting within we had a conversation with the fire marshal uh, as part of our assessment process and uh, they are okay with those with those in terms of like fire access and safety mm -hmm. right so uh, this would allow us to get this development as is uh, as well as for visitor parking uh, we would need uh, lenience on using the commercial uh, side uh, of the parking side uh, as also visitor uh, during the evening and uh, as well as road parking. So if somebody, if a visitor wants to park on the road that I believe currently they can, uh, there's no issue there, but we just wanted to validate with the city that this is something that, that would be okay. Uh, we're likely to have need to have to move that bus stop mm -hmm. maybe just before or <laughs> just after because it's sitting right at there right now mm -hmm. which is the access this is the emergency access uh, exit for the for the project okay and, and what about it. parking for the lofts the residents right. where would so, that be? So the parking is actually, if you look, every unit has mm -hmm. two two stalls right there. Okay. Right. I, I, I'm not sure if you can I couldn't, see that. Okay. Right. So so they're so they're surface, actually enclosed. It's, it's, it's surface par parking. It's surface parking and it's garages. Oh, garages. Okay. So like secured garages. Okay. But they can use also for storage. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Uh, All right. For this area here, this is the, these are the uh, this is the parking for the building. The building will be. Also a four story. This is actually where we need also some variance because uh, this this side here, we want to have all the amenities on the top floor, which is the fourth floor. Right? Uh, we're currently we're allowed only three stories. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. It sure does. Um, what else was I going to say? So if you have a four story on that building. And a lot of the visual is going north or northwest. Um, would it block the vision, say, from particularly from Building B? Uh, you mean looking up that way? Yes, because well, that's building uh, looking at the hill country is part of a nice view from that area. 
Yeah, I'm not honestly so sure. We did not test that view from the fourth level. Uh, we maybe should, honestly. We should get lift and just go up and see what kind of view we would get because that's mm -hmm. what people will be seeing from their rooftops. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's very good feedback. We will definitely have to take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it is a really pretty view. I agree. Yeah, brilliant. So just to uh, confirm, your market research does support uh, that our community or in the region will support a loft at two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars. Is that what you're saying per unit? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Sorry. All right. Very good. Yes. Anyone else? Anyone else in our chambers that would like to ask a question on this potential development in Leon Valley? Please, don't be shy. He needs your feedback. He wants your feedback. And Mayor, if we yes. can, I'd like to hear a little bit from Brandon about how we conceivably could grant variances in the overlay like he's requesting. Okay, that's fair. Let me, let me be sure that there's no other question in the chambers first. Okay, seeing none, then we'll move to Mr. Mr. Milan. Mr. Milan. Thank you very much thank for your you. time. You bet. Thank you, thank you for your all. presentation. Thank you. do appreciate it. Good evening, Mayor and Council, thank you. Um, so, in discussing these different projects, Mr. Shahadi mentioned uh, some of the challenges that go into any kind of mixed-use project or any kind of townhouse project, uh, and so so definitely, um, you know, sometimes flexibility is needed in order to facilitate complex projects in existing urban environments or master plan communities um, in order to make that whole vision uh, come to fruition. So there's a couple different ways to um, to provide relief. You know, relief. You know, generally, relief is kind of the, the primary general term for giving somebody waivers, variances, modifications, as zoning requirements. There's always variances, um, but as we we discussed uh, several months ago, you know, the path to a variance and that that is that is a very narrow path. Um, that uh, receiving a variance uh, variances are only uh, provided by a board of adjustment, um, and the criteria is very strict on that. And uh, there has to be a very clear hardship. And that's what state law. Um, dictates is there has to be a very clear, unique hardship that exists in order to validate uh, the the granting of a variance. Uh, and so, um, because that's such a narrow path, there um, there are other mechanisms which can be um, uh, a little bit more uh, efficient in doing that. Uh, and, and one of those one of those mechanisms is a, a plan development district zoning. Uh, a lot of you you may know it uh, also as a PUD. Uh, planned unit development. So a lot of cities have planned development district uh, zonings in place or PUD zonings in place. Uh, and um, in terms of legally, PUDs and, and PDDs have been established um, and and um, to to be a legally viable method of providing relief uh, from certain zoning requirements uh, for for you know complex projects, um, and and that provides an alternative to a, a variance. Um, that way, you know, if, if you give away a variance and the, there's not a hardship, then, then you're risking having to provide that equity to other people down the road, and so there are issues with that. So a PDD or a PUD is one method uh, uh, of uh, providing zoning for a project and providing relief from certain zoning requirements. And, uh, and so we've already started that process um, a couple of months ago. Uh, staff uh, took a uh, potential... A draft for a potential P for PDD plan development district regulations to the zoning commission, anticipating this project and also anticipating another project that we have in the works too. Um, and so, you know, there's criteria for plan development districts. You know, it always, um, you know, always needs to be in conformance with a comprehensive master plan. Uh, the purpose of a plan development district it, it needs to be for a lot more than just providing a waiver. You can't just ask for a plan development district just to get a variance for height or parking or something. It, it clearly needs to show this project conforms to the comprehensive master plan, the goals of the community, um, and, and it generally facilitates a project that is of higher quality or a more superior project than you would get just under the general regulations of the zoning code. So, so more or less, it's kind of a give and take. You know, it's okay. This, this variance is, is permitted to... Uh, you know this variance for height is permitted. However, you know that the city may um, and uh, receive other benefits out of that project um, that that show that that you know, demonstrate that that relief is providing a, a higher quality development. So, 
um, I think from a staff level, that is that is the zoning tool that, that I would anticipate um, using for this particular project. Um, and we've, we don't have a, we've never had a PDD or PUD yet, have we in this city? No, ma'am, we do okay. not have that zoning tool. So. You know, where most cities do have it. We have a mixed use zoning hmm, district right. that was created several years ago, I think, to anticipate more complex uh, projects, but, but that project um, doesn't really provide the flexibility of, of a PDD. You know, uh, the, the mixed use district has certain things that must be in place, you know, a certain percentage of it must be, you know, um, uh, a residential, a certain percentage but percentage of it must be op uh, open space. Um, and so uh, it's, it, that I would say that, uh, and also it, uh, one of the caveats of the mixed use zoning is that the project must be at least five acres in size. So I would say in my interpretation of the mixed use district is kind of anticipating a larger scale uh, project. And it's a good zoning district. I think it's a good thing to have in place for right now. It's just one of many tools that are available. And it's always good to have a lot of tools. Okay. In your, Could you your give the toolbox. council some more information on that? I'd like to read up on it and Absolutely. be knowledgeable of it if that's the road we're maybe thinking about going down. Absolutely. We uh, we presented that to the planning and zoning district. Um, and um, and so they, they, gave, they gave staff some feedback. They had some questions. Um, and so definitely that's, uh, that's something that we're looking at revisiting here at our next zoning commission meeting. Uh, and we're anticipating um, bringing that potentially to the city council at the August 20th meeting. You know, a lot of times we, we bring, you know, on SUPs and more simple zoning, you know, in an effort to be business friendly and not hold up the process, we'll bring it to the council a week or so after the, the zoning commission meeting. But we built in some time for the PDD since that's going to be a, a lot, a lot bigger zoning um, uh, change. And so to give you all a couple of weeks to, to look that over. Um, and, and look over what the Zoning Commission's recommendations, the details, give you all the opportunity to reach out to staff with questions. Okay. Um, so that's okay. that's what we anticipate. Yes. Answering Thank your questions. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, Councilman Bradshaw. Yeah, I just had one question, Mr. Mwan. Sure. Thank you. Um, as you were looking over these plans and these options, which one did you uh, prefer, the, the lofts or the apartments, or is there any benefit or negative yeah. of either one? Thanks for asking. I wouldn't say I prefer one over the other. You know, as your as your planning director, it's kind of my job to present to y'all the, the benefits and trade-offs of different development types. So I, I would say that's really, um, you know, it, um, it. my job is really easy when we have a comprehensive master plan that specifically says we want this kind of land use right here. Um, and, and so um, in our current comprehensive master plan, we don't have that. So that's, that's kind of why we're looking at going back through and digging in a little bit deeper. Um, and so, you know, what, what I'm working off of is, you know, previous planning efforts. You know, we've, we've talked a lot about, you know, there's been a past about having a potential town center here. Um, and we also have the sustainability overlay district in place that, um, that directs, you know, that allows for townhouses. Um, it does say that townhouses may uh, consume no more than 50% of any kind of project area. Um, you've got to have some mixed use in there. But also, you know, you read the purpose of the Sustainability Overlay District, and it says the purpose is to facilitate mixed use development. Um, but it doesn't go into a lot of depth about <clears throat> multifamily. And right now in the Sustainability Overlay District, multifamily is not permitted. That was what the direction was 10 years ago when we created that district. And so that's... And so, you know, that, that's where, you know, my recommendation to y'all and direction to y'all in terms of the benefits and trade-offs comes into play. Definitely. This is, townhouse is what the sustainability overlay district says is permitted. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, it's up to me to look at current planning efforts. We've got the Bandera Road planning effort underway. Um, we've, we've uh, you know, there's a number of different options that are going to be considered there, you know, in that effort, the word mixed use. Mixed use, multi-use boulevard comes up a lot, um, and uh, and also it's up to, to me to to look at okay, what are the the economic uh, benefits and trade-offs of say townhouse versus mixed use, you know, townhouse development with a hundred and uh, or with 67 residential units, two hundred fifty thousand dollars a piece. You do the math on that versus you know a, a four-story, four-rent development with mixed use that um, say has 50 units per acre versus a townhouse development that has 15 or 16, 
That's, that's a big difference in the number of people that are living there. That's a big difference in the number of shoppers that you're going to have in this community. That's also a substantial difference in the improved value of that property. Okay, now I'm just throwing out numbers, the difference between a, you know, a, a $12 million project versus a 45 to $50 million project. There's ad valorem that this city is going to get based on $12 million versus $45 million. Um, and, and so... Um, and it, so that's, there's, there's benefits and trade-offs there, you know, but then there's also traffic impact um, and different things there that, that have an impact. So that's, that's really, um, uh, you know, and looking at what, what the vision is, what kind of uses are compatible. You know, do we think that a townhouse for sale development is compatible right next to, you know, a heavy traffic corridor? I mean, it's literally a stone's throw from Bandera Road. Is that some place where townhouse is appropriate or maybe Bandera Road which is a you know very uh, high traffic corridor, um, which you know I, I I lived in Austin for I worked on some projects up there, you know I look at I look at Bandera Road I see a, a very sharp comparison between Bandera Road and South Lamar, and looking at what exists on South Lamar in Austin single family low density auto oriented uh, retail, um, and you see you know what's developing there a lot more um, you know higher density mixed use development. Um, which is creating a lot more uh, more value for the community, and maybe is that more appropriate for a, a high density, high um, uh, high impact corridor? And so, so those are things. And you know, as your planner, I, I wouldn't say my preference is high density, but I would say uh, I believe that a high density mixed use multifamily is more appropriate for that area, and is more sustainable long term economically uh, for this community. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And Same. we look forward to getting that information on the PDD or the PUD. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving then to the city manager's report, uh, Ms. Caldera. So the city manager's report is outside. I'm not going to go over the upcoming meetings. Uh, I just wanted to let council know that there was an issue at the intersection of Evers and Warsbach. There is a sinkhole there. We don't know how long it's going to take for the repairs um, to take place, uh, but they're doing everything they can to do it uh, quickly. Uh, and so hopefully the roads will open shortly. Uh, Crystal, how did that happen? Uh, uh, the contractor from SAWS hit mm -hmm. a water main, okay. um, and it caused a sinkhole to happen. Okay. Everything's happening on the San Antonio side. It was San Antonio's project. Mm -hmm. We're just getting the impact of the traffic. Exactly. Okay. Thank you for that. I You're appreciate welcome. it. Um, and then I just wanted to reiterate that there's not E. coli in our drinking water. Um, there was a lot of stuff that was going out on the media. Um, they didn't. I guess what happened was they didn't read all the way down the post that we sent out, um, and so it was a secondary well. Um, it was taken from a wall, raw water sample, um, and so currently right now we're flushing that well out. It's offline, and once it's back up in service, we'll let everybody know. Okay. Um, so they don't have to um, boil their water or anything like to. that? Okay. We're, we're good. good. It's not, thank you. I did get a call on that. Okay. Um, thank you. And then there is a Citizens Police Advisory Committee because of the 312 hearing that was originally scheduled for Wednesday night. They had canceled the meeting, but since the 312 hearing got moved, they're, went, they're going ahead and posted for the Citizens okay. Police Advisory Committee, and that will be here tomorrow night at 6. Um, and then Sandra sent you all an email on the t annual TML conference. Um, it is in San Antonio this year. Um, so uh, if any of you all want to go, if you can please let Sandra know by Monday, uh, she'd greatly appreciate it so that we can get you all registered. All right. And that concludes my city manager report. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Crystal, I just wanted to um, point out that the coffee with the mayor and council is this coming Saturday, uh, 9 to 11, here in this room. And I believe last council meeting I had specifically asked if we could actually put the topic, which is peach tree, and it's not there. No, what I'm going to so do is I'm going to send out a that. special e-news just for the coffee because I realized after I sent it, I realized that I told Mary Bell to add it on this okay. news, but we'll send out one all by itself since it's a location change okay. um, and the topic is Petrie. Okay, and then could you also put it on the website there. under the, the little number 20, I mean the 20th of July, it just, just says coffee. Okay. okay, could you I'll put, put the, topic the topic there, there too? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, because some people might just go there and not have e-news. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Not a problem. All right. Uh, moving then to agenda item number four. Oh, are there any questions for Ms. Caldera? Additional questions, I'm sorry, from the council? or from our guest in the chambers. 
Okay. Uh, seeing none, then we'll move to citizens to be heard. Agenda item number four. Anyone in the chambers like to address the council this evening? Please come forward and state your name and where you live. And you have up to five minutes to speak under citizens to be heard. Okay. Seeing no one, then we'll move to announcements by the mayor and council members. Uh, Councilor Charles, do you have any announcements? I want to thank everyone for coming, and I thank you for your presentation. Uh, those look great. I, uh, I just, uh, I, would, I was out of town for a few days. My brother is sick in Arkansas, so I was up getting his business so I can take care of his business long distance. <laughs> and so that's difficult, but uh, we managed to accomplish everything we needed to do. So I'm glad I'm back. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Rodriguez. I second uh, Ms. Donna as far as thanking everybody for coming. And I know everybody thanked the people that worked 4th of July. But again, thanks for all the hard work you do on that day and every other day. Thank you. Councilor Alcacer. Yeah. I was glad to see that we dodged a bullet on that uh, Evers Wurstbuck uh, fiasco. That because a number of ours have been caused by contractors, like the big one on Bandera Road a year or so ago. But um, it it wasn't hard to do the cut throughs to get by it. So it isn't that difficult yet. But hopefully it will be done. Thank you for coming and thank you for your interest in what the city does. Thank you, Councillor Martinez. Again, thank you uh, everybody for being here tonight and the people. Uh, on the internet and I really want to thank all the support I have received from not just the residents of Leon Valley but uh, a lot of people in San Antonio for the uh, fiasco that's going on here. Thank you. Councilor Bradshaw. Uh, I'd just like to thank everybody the same as the rest of the councilors for everybody attending and taking an interest in the city matters. Okay. Thank you. All right, I think everything's been said. I hope to see you uh, this Saturday at the coffee here at 9 o'clock. And then if anyone is um, not sure, the 312 hearing's been rescheduled for this Thursday at 5.30. And if we need to, we go to Friday at 5.30 here in the chambers. All right, thank you. I'm sorry. Oh, Chief Naughton is here. How about uh, Chief Burnside? He's not here? Five more minutes? Okay, we'll wait for both of them. Uh, as you know, we're waiting for the two chiefs so we can um, honor them appropriately. All right, moving then to consent agenda. Uh, consent agenda items 6.1 through 6.5. Uh, is there any one of the counselors that, that would like to uh, pull any of these items for discussion? Uh, seeing no one, may I have a motion and a second to approve? I move that we approve 6.1 through 6.5 as presented I'll second all right we have a motion by Councillor Alcacer and a second by Councillor Rodriguez to uh, approve consent agenda items 6.1 through 6.5 as presented all those in favor say aye. Aye. aye aye any opposed the motion does carry uh, moving then to agenda item number seven ordinance Ms. Pasley if you'll please read that ordinance an ordinance amending the Leon Valley Code of Ordinances, Chapter 1, Article 1.04, City Council, Section 1.04.002, Assignment of Council Members to Committees, Providing for Repealer, Severability, and Savings Clauses, and Providing for an Effective Date. Okay. Uh, this is a second read, um, and uh, we will need to vote on it tonight. Is there any questions regarding what's in the packet? It's very short uh, before... We, we move on this. Uh, there are no changes. There's no changes from the last. Okay. Yes, Councilor Acker, sir. I would like to uh, change, t t take out the word um, temporary, because we don't really have temporary committees, except maybe we're about to form one, but it, the... Um, I'm sorry, where is the temporary? It, it's under... Um, the language is so your sign code advisory committee is it has a, is it sunset so as soon as that committee is done with the sign code and presents to you all that committee is technically a temporary committee uh, well we just have temporary committees and statutory boards and what uh, and 
What about the other committees that are neither of those? Then I'd like to include those. Mayor and Council, mm -hmm. if I can uh, yes. make a suggestion. Sure, go ahead. Um, um, we can put language in that says standing committees, okay. temporary committees, um, and um, statutory boards. Okay, and I thought our code said that the uh, mayor and council, but is it no longer just the mayor? Isn't that under our city charter? Let me, what page? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find I'm it in the page. page 118 oh, okay. in our packet. 118? Okay. Oh, there it is right there. The mayor from time to time may appoint one or more council members to temporary committees and statutory boards to serve as council liaisons. The member appointed shall not vote or count as a quorum. And um, what, what did you want to, what was you, what were you saying that? Okay, I, I thought our charter said the mayor and council or something. It, anyway, doesn't, doesn't uh, just any longer say the mayor is what my recall is. Mm -hmm. I may be mistaken, mm -hmm. but I, I don't, I didn't, and I didn't bring my charter, didn't bring my charter tonight. either. I don't have mine. Um, let me see. Let's get one. Oh, can I borrow your? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And then would we add um, standing committees, standing committees, temporary and statutory? Make that change. Did y'all see that on page 118? I don't know which one it is, but I think we have it like the mayor with the approval of city council because we always vote on. Mm -hmm. the yeah, I, I usually I usually do the appointments and y'all usually approve them. So, do you want to say the mayor with approval from city council from time to time? Right. Is that? Well, I don't know if it from time to time needs to be in there. Appoint one or more. Uh, because this, this has to do with the council members. Okay. They were volunteers. I was going to say, I said just what I was thinking. It's yeah. usually volunteering. Y'all usually volunteer for a committee. So, so it's not a I don't think it'll be controversial. At least I'd hope not. <laughs> no, I want to be the council liaison. No, I want to be. So um, just to, for clarification, Mayor and Council, um, is um, Councilor Alcazar, is your motion to move that um, we amend what's in the ordinance attached um, to have language in Section 1 that says the Mayor, with approval from City Council, may appoint one or more Council members to standing and temporary committees and statutory boards to serve as council liaisons. The members appointed shall not vote or count as a quorum. Yeah, I don't think that would be okay. Is that your motion? I, I so move. <laughs> okay. Do we have a motion? Does anyone want to second this? I second. All right. We have a motion by Councillor Alcacer and a second by Councillor Charles uh, to amend 7.1 uh, ordinance to include um, the mayor with council approval may appoint uh, one or more council members to standing temporary committees and statutory boards to serve as council liaisons. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
the motion does carry. Was that unanimous? Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. I never know. Um, be, you know, I just realized um, before, please bear with me, and I meant to do it under announcements, but Melinda just wanted to show me, but I wanted to show everyone, and I'll leave it out there in the, in the foyer. This is the plaque that the Public Works received from APWA, Texas chapter in recognition of outstanding achievement project of the year structures, two million to five million, and is, is presented uh, to Evers Road Bridge, City of Leon Valley. And I just wanted to thank you for sharing this with us. And and again, let's show our appreciation for a job well done. All of a sudden, Melinda, I saw it and I went, oh no, I I, I blew it. I forgot. <laughs> it's just, just, but thank you for bringing it. And we will let everyone. Know. Thank you. Oh, and Eric is here. All right. So if um, if the council and our citizens will bear, bear with us, we will then now move back to agenda item 2.1, presentation and administration of the oath of office of Leon Valley Fire Chief Michael Naughton and Assistant Chief Eric Burnside. If they will come in, please, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Good. We apologize for the no, smell no. up front. Safety is <laughs> safety's number one in this community, so we certainly understand. Everybody is just so glad y'all are back. Okay, so uh, let me take uh, Chief Naughton first. Okay. If you'll please um, repeat after me, let me just say in the uh, in the name of the authority of the state of Texas, I Michael Naughton. Do solemnly swear to do my duty as fire chief of the city of Leon Valley, Texas, to the best of my ability to serve the city of Leon Valley Fire Department with honor, integrity, and courage. I will faithfully and impartially discharge my duties for the appointment of the department according to the laws of the state of Texas and of the city of Leon Valley to the best of my skills and abilities. So help me God. Thank you, and I think you were supposed to raise your hand, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just not with it tonight. Signed by my hand, and usually I'll repeat, but I just thought, you know, you can read and, and do this, and so we appreciate that. Signed by my hand on the 16th day of jo July 2019. Chief, thank you. We're so glad you're here and doing a fantastic job. Let's give our chief a round of applause. Uh, in the name, okay, raise your hand. Yes, sir. In the name uh, and by the right hand, that's right. <laughs> in the name and by the authority of the state of Texas, I, Eric Burnside, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, to do my duty as assistant fire chief, to do my duty as assistant fire chief, of the city of Leon Valley, Texas, of the city of Leon Valley, Texas, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, to serve the City of Leon Valley Fire Department with honor, integrity, and courage. To serve the City of Leon Valley Fire Department with honor, integrity, and courage. I will faithfully and impartially discharge. I will faithfully and impartially discharge. My duties for the appointment of the department. My duties for the appointment of the department. According to the laws of the State of Texas. According to the laws of the State of Texas. And the City of Leon Valley. And of the City of Leon Valley. To the best of my skills and abilities, so help me God. To the best of my skills and abilities, so help me God. Signed by my hand, the 16th day of July, 2019, Mayor Chris Riley. Congratulations. Thank you. We're so glad. Yes. I don't know if many of y'all know, but uh, uh, fire, uh, Chief Burnside was promoted from fire marshal to assistant. Yes, ma'am. Fire chief, so we thank you for that. Thank okay, you. and how many years have you been here? Six years. Six years, and I, I know don't. you were at the, we, we stole you from the uh, city of Chavano, and you've been here for about? Eight months. <laughs> months, there you go. Okay, very good. Anything else that you'd like to say? That's it. Are you sure? Thank, thank you. you so much. I'm sorry. Mayor, I mean, that way. Mayor. Anyway. Oh. Mrs. Burnside's here, too. Oh, so. Mrs. Yes, Burnside, yes. 
you know, I kept looking at her, and I said, I've seen her before. I've seen her before. Who is she? Come on up, Mrs. Thank Burnside. Thank yes, and take so pictures. Thank you. No, no, you would have been in trouble. How are you? So glad you're here. Thank you so much. All right. And y'all, okay. And, and the city attorney said she was Smokey the Bear in the parade. Yes, she was. <laughs> oh, were you? Oh, my gosh, that's awesome. Okay, thank you. Was she sacrificed for the city, too? That was it was hot. Yeah. As per the council's approval, uh, agenda number 8.4 um, will be presented next under regular agenda. Discussion and possible action on the creation of a city council subcommittee with the appointment of two city council members to serve as city council liaisons to the zoning commission regarding a zoning and community feedback process for a potential mixed-use development on approximately three acres generally located at 6758 Poss Road. Uh, Mr. Milan, do you have something to present? Mayor, may I ask? May I ask first a uh, question for um, our city attorney? Okay. Go ahead. Should we have included the word subcommittee in the prior <laughs> motion, and is it too late to do it? Or will this one stand on its own? This will probably stand on its own. All right, thank you. Okay. Yeah, this is a unique committee right here. Mm -hmm. it could, I'm sorry. It could probably be filed under temporary committee. Yes, I okay. think so. Yeah. All right, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll keep my presentation brief. Uh, uh, and so, as as the city attorney pointed out, you know, this could be classified as temporary committee. Um, you could also classify this as, you know, appointing project liaisons, council project liaisons as well. C subcommittee was just the, the term that I use. I, I worked in San Marcos, and that's what we did on major complex projects. You know, we had master plan communities or, or big mixed-use projects. You know, typically the city council, um, in recognizing the importance and complexity of such a project and, and the importance of making sure that all the different, um, you know, approval boards, you know, governing body, making sure everybody is on the same page. Uh, citizens also are, are receiving, you know, constant uh, getting opportunities for input at all aspects of this project, um, making sure that everybody is involved uh, in, in that project as the project moves along. And so in San Marcos, you know, we typically have a subcommittee um, and uh, the governing body would appoint um, two to three uh, council members, and, and that was their specific role was, you know, being involved in the zoning commission meetings. Um, and, and there, frequently, they would ha even have um, meetings. Depending on how complex the project was, some of those meetings would be open to the public um, to, to work through those issues. Again, the point of projects like this is to make sure that the community is able to give feedback uh, at all steps. That way, by the time the project gets to the governing body, um, there aren't any, any things that are, are left, uh, any stones left unturned, and, and there aren't any big issues that might become contentious and make everybody's time uh, wasted in the end. So, so that's really, you know, that's, that's something that um, staff is recommending, um, that the, the governing body appoint two members um, from this governing body, uh, from the council to, um, to, to be the, the council liaisons uh, for the development of this project. Um, and to just, you know, kind of specifically identify, you know, it's up to the council to decide what those duties specifically would be. Um, but, but you know, in, uh, in staff's, you know, um, recommendation and bringing this item to you, I could specifically see two specific tasks of the council to be to attend zoning commission meetings. Uh, we already had some council members at, at the zoning commission meeting, so we've already been receiving that feedback. That's great. Um, but to have two council members that would uh, attend uh, zoning commission meetings, be there to hear the community input, be there to hear the zoning commission dialogue, um, and then have that be their task to, to be reporting back to the city council as a body uh, in, in public meetings. You know, obviously there's Open Meetings Act requirements for, you know, council discussing outside of a meeting. So that's the whole point is 
um, you know, I could uh, you know, potentially have uh, items on subsequent uh, council agendas for those council liaisons uh, to be able to give uh, an update on the project to the council as a body. So here's where the project is. At the last zoning commission meeting, we discussed these particular topics. Uh, and, and really in complex projects like this, it's all about information, communication happening uh, at all levels. Um, and, and so, um, you know, I've, at, at a staff level, uh, the developers uh, initially reached out to me. It's my job to provide them with preliminary feedback. And then at a certain point before the project gets too far, uh, it's my job to bring that, that project to the Zoning Commission, which is exactly what I did. And then tonight, you know, Zoning Commission provided feedback. That's why Mr. Smith, the chairman, brought the project to y'all uh, to begin that dialogue with y'all. Y'all have given feedback. You know, the Zoning Commission provided a little bit of feedback that's not exactly the same as the council. So that's exactly why we create subcommittees like this and why we have different people. That way, everybody's involved. And if council maybe has uh, certain opinions on the project um, or the, the liaisons do, and then, um, you know, the Zoning Commission seems to have opinions, everybody's having that discussion together. And then the community is able to be in the room at the Zoning Commission and the council meeting for all this dialogue. So that's, that's a great way for a project to evolve. Uh, and so that's the purpose of this item this evening. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, what is the uh, estimated length of time? I would say, um, you know, ideally, you know, we can um, ideally within the next three to four months, three I think, months. you know, we could have um, a few a few different meetings. You know, I think a good uh, aggressive timeline would be three to four months. You know, sometimes projects like this can take up to six months. OK, so at uh, the end of three to four months, when we get the project passed from the council, then this committee uh, subcommittee would be dissolved. Yes, ma'am. OK, very good. Thank you. Any other questions? I'm interested. Okay, you're interested. Anyone else interested? Uh, I, I would be interested as well. Okay. Um, I'm just that was my question as well as the time period, and, right. and maybe Mr. Milan can tell me how often does the zoning committee meet? Is it once, once, once a, a month? month? Mm -hmm, okay, usually. so that would, that's not a bad. I could do it as well. It's usually the last, uh, the fourth Tuesday of the month. Okay. Zoning fourth. commission. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Charles, if you want to do it, you can do it too. Okay. All right. So anyone else like to be considered besides uh, uh, Councillor? Well, no, I understand, but I want to make sure and we could vote on it if anyone else is interested in serving. I have Councillor Bradshaw, Councillor Alcacer. Anyone else? Can I make a motion? We accept these two All right. nominees. Thank you. And is there a second? I second. All right. There's a motion uh, to appoint uh, Councillor uh, Bradshaw and Councillor Alcacer to the subcommittee uh, that we've been discussing for this special mixed-use project. Any further discussion? And we have a motion by Councillor uh, Martinez and a second by Councillor Char Charles. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion does carry. Thank you all very much. I, I realized I hadn't said who, who moved and who seconded it. So, okay. Thank you. Um, then we move back to um, agenda item 8.1. Um, Ms. Pasolet, if you'll please read that ordinance. An ordinance of the City of Leon Valley, Texas, City Council accepting the lowest responsive bid and awarding a contract in the amount not to exceed $261,498 with 15% for contingency to Clearfield Construction for the purpose of constructing the Forest Meadow, Meadow Drainage Project, authorizing the City Manager to execute a contract, authorizing the amendment of the Enterprise Fund budget for, for fiscal year 2018-2019 in the amount of $170,723 to provide pro proper funding, proper um, providing repealer, severability, and savings clauses, and providing for an effective date. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening, Ms. Moritz, and welcome. We appreciate you being here. So in other words, we're looking at a rain garden. We are. Yeah, that's what I kept looking for the word. It's but kind of yeah. a, a mix between uh -huh. a, uh, we couldn't do a bioswale, but it's going to have weirs in it. It'll have rain garden. It's going to be really a pretty mm -hmm. project. Right. Okay. And so the purpose and the goals of it are to improve the water quality entering Hebner Creek, reduce flooding and ponding of the stormwater, create a park amenity that's attractive to our community, and maximize our tree planting opportunities. So this is going to fall right into that. We need to plant more trees. Mm -hmm. Here's the project location. Do you have your, yeah. Okay. 
This is Raymond Rimkus Park up here, and this is the forest meadow entrance down here. And there's a natural area. And this gives you a better view of the problem child. This entrance right here takes all the water from this side of that subdivision, and it ponds right in here. This used to be a drain that went under this bridge, and it would go down here, and then there's an underground drain that goes straight to Hebner Creek. Well, this is all silted in under here, and now it just it creates an alluvial fan right here, and this is just horrible. It's impassable even today. In 2016, the Park Commission was approached by the Greater Edwards Aquifer Alliance about a grant opportunity for the installation of a rain garden somewhere in the city. They, they weren't picky about where we put it, but the park and staff chose this area because it is frequently inundated with the floodwaters. It's impassable for days at a time. That bridge is not ADA compliant. It does not have the correct slope on it. And then the water rushes down to Hebner Creek, which add, adds to the bank erosion. The project was recommended for approval by the Park Commission as this area is not used for park activities right now. But then the Greater Edwards Aquifer Authority realized they'd made a mistake. The park is not in a recharge zone and so therefore we were not eligible for a grant. The Park Commission recommended going ahead with the project because it does support our stormwater best management practices and it'll relieve all the problems in there plus get rid of that bridge. And this just shows you the Sun Valley drainage area. And so this whole side of this subdivision drains directly down to the forest meadow entrance and a little portion right here too. The rest of this is another problem child, but we'll have to address it at a different time because this is what goes directly into the natural area and then directly down to Hebner Creek. That is the flood way, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oops, and there you see the bridge, and you can clearly see the slope. Not not good. Plus, it's ugly. Yes. You know that was done when uh, wow. Mayor. That was done, Melinda, when Mayor Meffert was here. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's been a long and time. And PVC was all the rage for some mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And can you describe how they're going to change the bridge? It'll be completely ripped out, and then it'll okay. be just it'll go down into the swale, so oh. you'll actually walk down it and up. Oh, there will okay. be no bridge whatsoever. There'll be no bridge whatsoever. Okay, great, thank you. And then this is the area that collects most of the oil, gas, mud, transmission fluid, whatever's coming off of uh, Forest Meadow. And it makes the gardeners mad because it's hard for them to get their equipment and supplies through mm -hmm. to the garden. You can't use the the sidewalks over mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So we're going to incorporate low impact development design principles. So like I said, we couldn't do the bioswale, but we can do some retention and other similar water quality improvement features, plus provide a design that's functional and beautiful. This also conforms to the city's master plan for our environment. Remember, we wanted to do the 500 live trees per year. Mm -hmm. And this is an example of what one can look like. And so all that water will go right in and filtrate down mm -hmm. instead of running off. Mm -hmm. And there's just another shot of one. I love those grasses. I think they're so beautiful. Don't you? And then these are some of the grasses that were recommended by the, uh, the people that designed this project. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty. And just some more of them. And this is what the finished product would look like. Um, Here's the entrance off of Forest Meadow, and you'd have a nice little walking path that goes all the way around. Here is the, the retention area, so you'd have a neat, uh, probably limestone block weir here, mm -hmm. and limestone block weir here. This bridge would be removed, and this drains then slowly, or much more slowly, down to our Hebner Creek. Are you all going to have to clean out, you know, the silt that's been... Yes, ma'am. Yes, where it'll drain all hole. the way to Hebner Creek? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So our engineering was 26,832, but that was already budgeted for this project. Um, the low bid on the construction was 261,498, with we add contingency in. So the total for that is going to be 327,555. We budgeted 156,832, so we're going to need a budget adjustment of 170,723. Um, like I said, we'd put money in, but we only put 130,000 as a as a place marker. After the design and engineering, the engineer's construction estimate was 152000 so we weren't that far off from the, the engineer's bid, 
However, the bids did come in higher. Mm -hmm. So in order to fully fund it, we'll need that uh, budget adjustment. The stormwater fund balance was 950,000 as of last September. And the funds that are in this, uh, this fund may only be spent on stormwater. So we can't use it for streets or for sidewalks or any other projects. Mm -hmm. And so we recommend that the city council approve an ordinance which would award the bid to Clearfield Construction in the amount of 261,498 with 15% for contingency, authorize the city manager to enter into a contract and approve the budget adjustment for 170,000 from the stormwater fund balance for this project. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, I had a question. Uh, is the, the balance of uh, 950,434 as of 930,18, is that the current budget we we get money every month from stormwater right yes ma'am so and that I think funds it's like always around 300 300,000 a year that okay. we that we bring in from that all right so we have plenty we haven't done anything else in the in recent months that we took from stormwater i'm trying we to think we did part of the street sweeper yes okay mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. but we still have plenty to cover it with yes, the and you'll let us know what the balance is after we yes ma'am okay and then also i'm i'm concerned about the impact on the park because I'm there almost every morning because we do have a garden as well, garden plot. And I mean, it is teeming with people jogging, uh, running. They have their dog, their strollers. So how is that? Are we going to have to, you know, you know, block off this whole section so people can't walk there? Or how's We that will. Be? However, um, like I said, the only part of this that's used regularly is the um, basketball court. Well, this is all just flat, vacant, yuck ground okay. right now. So but they that, run, that, but yeah, they that, run this way. Is that going to be okay? That, that won't be shut down? The, the part that will is where the bridge is. Is the bridge. Because we're so going to take yeah. the bridge out. Mm -hmm. So where are they going to go? They'll have to go around the other way, keep going straight. Oh. Or they can walk down here and walk around. Okay. That's the uh, baseball. Progress takes some sacrifice. I know. Baseball. Baseball diamond. Okay. Um, Oh, does this um, rain garden have to be watered? That's what I was wondering. No, they're all, um, they will to begin with, to, to begin get them with. established. Okay. But then they're all native grasses that, that grow whether you water them or not. Okay. All right. That sounds good. All right. And then I had asked about the bridge, but you said it was going to be taken out and it's going to be a slope. So those are my questions. Anyone else? Yes. Councilor Alcacer. I just wondered why it came in so much higher than the engineer's estimate do you have any clue mm -hmm. no and i couldn't ask questions because i did the same thing i'm like mm -hmm. holy moses it's 120,000 above what both me and the engineer said you know i can see me making that mistake but mm -hmm. so we'll have to wait and once it's awarded go ask them you know what the heck mm -hmm. is it because it's so unique and people haven't done many of these it could be that. It also could be that the contractor doesn't own his own equipment and has to rent it. It could be the cost of concrete with him. It, there's just okay. a lot of variables in there. So right. I'm really anxious to know, too, though. When I find out, I'll let you all know. So you will get an itemization of this bid? Okay. Yeah. Very good. Anyone so else? Oh, is the, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. The, um, we had seen the presentation several times with the Park Commission, and it's going to be similar but not as quite the thing that they had were going to Correct. Make. But were they the same ones who helped with the design or? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Uh, Councillor mm -hmm. Charles. So that trail that's all around there, is that paved or cemented or, or natural? We were thinking of put, about putting um, decomposed granite. Oh, yes. That's what I have. I like that. It depends, mm -hmm. though. I mean, we've got to see if, if it's going to last through a flood because mm -hmm. the area yeah, does flood. That's so. right. Oh, yeah, because that washes away. Mm -hmm. It may be that we do it out of hot asphalt, just like we did the rest of the trails over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. What about some permeable surface? If it doesn't wash away. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. I love the permeable concrete. Mm -hmm. That stuff is awesome, and it looks great. It looks like dirt, mm -hmm. but it, it has to be able to stand up to the forces. So. Mm -hmm. All right, and it's right in the Thank floodway. You. So, uh, Councillor Bradshaw. Um, is, is, well, two questions. The, is the pavilion included in the, the bid, the estimate? No, sir. That's okay, been, so that's a um, feature. Y have, it's in the budget for October 1. Okay, so it'll be eventually. I didn't know if that was part of this or. Yes. Sir. Okay. And then the other thing is the grasses. Um, I guess we would make sure that they're deer proof. Good luck. <laughs> deer proof? Oh, boy. Yeah, because I can't grow anything in my house. No. The deer. Hey, they've yeah. already eaten up the, the uh, monarch butterfly garden. 
you yeah. know it just yeah but it keeps coming back mm -hmm. it does it does keep coming back mm -hmm. right now so right. they look really nice the other mm -hmm. day okay yes councillor martinez i like this project and i think it's going to make a beautiful addition to our park mm -hmm. very good anyone else Okay, very good. Thank you. This is one, our one yes. last question. Yes, Can you please give us a definition of a weir? A weir is like a, a dam, basically, a smaller dam. And so it'll have two, three dams in it. One, two, three. Does it require it to be like a grassy dam? Or? No, we're going to make it out of, I think, limestone block, if I remember from what the plans say. Um, mm -hmm. Like the stuff that's on the bridge. Okay, okay. yeah. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, this is our first read, and so we will um, take this action up on August 6th. Are there any other questions from our residents in the chambers? Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. This is, this is awesome. Do appreciate it. All right. And you're, you're next, I think, up as well. No, 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 no. I take that back. Agenda item number 8.2. Uh, Ms. Postle, if you'll please read that ordinance. An ordinance of the City of Leon Valley, Texas City Council amending Leon Valley Code of Ordinances Appendix A, Fee Schedule, Article A8.002, Building Permits, to modify permit fees for residential building permits, providing for repealer, severability, and savings clause, and providing for an effective date. All right. Thank you. So, uh, Ms. Mr. Antu is not here this evening? Mr. Antu is not here All this right. evening. He's under the weather, so I'll be All presenting right. in you. his place. Thank you. Continue, please. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the item tonight, the purpose of this item is to amend uh, Chapter 3 or, and, uh, and amend the, the city's current uh, fee schedule requirements, uh, fees for residential building permits. Um, and uh, at, on May 21st, 2019, the governor signed HB 852 into law. And um, among the many bills uh, that, that were passed this last legislative session applying to uh, municipal uh, regulations. This was one of them, and, and what this law said is it prohibits cities from calculating their residential building permit fees based on the cost of the valuation of the proposed project. So, um, when when a when somebody comes into our office uh, to apply for a building permit, uh, there's a little section on the building permit application that says uh, valuation and, and cost of what you're proposing. Is it a three hundred thousand dollar house? or a $50,000 uh, addition to a house. And so you're required to fill in that field. Um, and then we have a fee schedule in our code um, that basically says, here's a base fee, depending on how much the cost is, here's a base fee. And then in addition to that base fee, um, there's a, you know, a certain amount uh, per $1,000 uh, of, uh, of the value. And so that's how we calculate that fee. And so HB 52 specifically said you can't do that anymore for residential permits. It didn't say anything about commercial permits. It just said you can't do it for residential permits. Uh, so specifically, the bill said um, that in determining the amount of a building permit or inspection fee required in connection with the construction or improvement or residential dwelling, the city may not consider the value of the dwelling. So it also even says we can't require that information. So we had to change our applications to say we may not even require that they disclose that because that's a violation of this law. Um, so it says the city may not consider the value of the dwelling or the cost of constructing or approving the dwelling. And like I said, a city may not require the disclosure of information. So we've already taken that measure. But that's easy to do. We can just put on our application, please don't fill this out. <laughs> um, and so the next step is uh, we need to amend our fee schedule. Um, and, and fortunately, you know, we don't get a lot of residential permits. Um, so we've had a little bit of time to look at this, you know, a lot of, frankly, a lot of cities are kind of reeling from this because, you know, it's, you know, most cities do base their, all their, their fees off of, um, you know, kind of a base fee and then a, and a, and a supplemental fee based on the valuation. Um, so, uh, like I said, most cities are revising their fee schedules to assign, to keep a base fee, um, for residential permits with a supplemental charge is based on the square footage of the project. There's just not a lot of things you can base an additional fee on. So valuation, square footage are, are the, the most uh, logical approaches. Um, so like I said, you know, included in your packet um, is the proposed ordinance revision. Um, and right now there's a fee schedule that applies to all commercial and residential projects. Um, it's just, it's the same for commercial and residential. And so what, uh, what the, the proposed ordinance revision, we're keeping it simple. You know, we already have 
um, base fees for like say a water heater, things like that, just more simple permits that there's no square footage associated with something like that. It's just a water heater. So we have a flat fee for those types of things. So fortunately our fee schedule wasn't super complicated that all we needed to do was just make kind of a simple quick fix. And so that quick fix is up here. Um, what we did in arriving at this, this new method, we looked at what the Texas Municipal League recommended that we do. Um, I put that update, that bulletin in your packet. Um, so you can see, you know, we were, we're always looking to see what Texas Municipal League recommends. Um, so we, we followed their guidance. They recommend a square footage, um, uh, basing the fees on square footage. And so what we did is we just looked at a couple of projects we've had over the last year. Uh, we had a, uh, a new build project over in Mono Robles, over on Thunderbird. So that was a, that was a good uh, recent build project to look at. That was a pretty large house, about 3,000 square feet. So what we did is we just looked at, okay, what was the square footage of that project? Um, what was the value? You know, what did the fee come out to on that project? And then we looked at what was the square footage of the project, and we just basically did the math in reverse to come up with the same exact fee. Um, and so in looking at that, um, you know, we already have uh, in, our, in our fee schedule for that project, the base fee would have been $800,000. Um, and then we did the rest of the math on it, the remainder of that cost, um, we just divided uh, and got 50 cents. So if, if that project were to come in today um, and we applied this, this new fee requirement, $800 minimum permit fee plus 50 cents per square foot, that project would have received the same permit fees. Um, and same, you know, we had a, an addition uh, in a remodel project, uh, pretty small project. We looked at that, um, definitely a smaller project, um, you know, would have uh, within, I think it was a, a project that was about, Fifty thousand, fifty thousand um, dollars, and so if you look at our fee schedule, a project about fifty thousand dollars, it would have had a base fee of about four hundred dollars, plus a supplemental fee on top of it based on the valuation. So again, we did the math kind of in reverse. If you applied that four hundred dollar minimum permit fee, um, the balance of that that cost that they paid, you know, you look at again, came up, it actually came to about fifty cents a square foot. Um, so again, just want to reiterate, you know, this is. Um, what we're looking to do here, we're not, you know, uh, this isn't going to change the cost based on the research that we've had, and we're going to keep monitoring it too. You know, these fees is definitely something. It's never, it's not, a, it's not a science. It's just, and that's part of our role. It's just kind of monitoring our fees. We're always doing that anyway. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna do this. We're recommending this. Next round of projects that will come in, will come in. We'll apply the new fee, obviously, because that'll be the law after um, the next council meeting. And it will also just look at what the old fee would have been. Make sure this new fee that we have here isn't more. And if it's more, if it's drastically more, yeah, we'll bring this right back to you and say, hey, okay, we had to modify it. It's just impossible to anticipate every single circumstance. So, um, but again, to reiterate, this is, in our estimate, our research, our analysis, these fees are gonna result in the same fees, no more, no less. Um, and so um, I think I already addressed how we, how we went about the approach, so with that, um, you know, we have the, the proposed ordinance in your packet, shows the red lines um, and, um, and the, the new fees I just talked about. So I'm happy to take any questions. Okay. So that, that was my questions um, before when I was looking at it. I didn't understand, but that um, you've said it more than once that the city will not lose money as a result of this legislative change. We're keeping it even from the, what we had to this new. So that's good. And I'm just wondering, uh, we're raising fees to cover what? So our fee schedule, and I'll say uh, there are a few things, a few costs that the city incurs uh -huh. during the permitting process. Yeah. First of all, we have a third-party building uh, plan review and inspection consultant. So we have to pay them. You okay. know, we don't have that person in-house. Um, and, uh, and also our fees, you know, we have uh, a fire marshal. Okay. So a fire marshal has to go out and do inspections. Um, you know, staff, there's definitely staff involved in all aspects of the process. I'm involved. We've got two permit technicians. We have a permit technician, a planning technician, an assistant director. And, and here, it's not, it's not a deal where just the permit technicians handle it and I handle a big thing. I mean, we, everything that comes in the door, everybody has their hands on it because that's the way it ought to be in, in these things. You know, okay. there's a lot of complex projects. So you're paying for four staff members generally. Um, and uh, and then there's you know there's inspectors building inspector like I said building okay. inspector yeah I um, just I just wanted to note what yeah. those because we we were raising the fees to cover something so that's what I was 
wanting to know. Okay. Well, we're Maybe. not raising. We're not well, raising. I'm saying the fees cover these these uh, right. areas that we need. Yeah. Right. And so, and, right. and I do want to add too. Again, uh, I've been here for about a year, um, and I believe uh, Linda could correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the last time we looked at our fee schedule was 2015. Um, that's something that we always need to be looking at. So, um, to, based on your question, what you know, in, in city government, we should never be making money on fees. Oh. We should always be, in a, in a perfect world, breaking even. Again, at the end of the day, the cost of development needs to pay for itself. And so, you know, the citizens don't, you know, request that a new strip center comes in. So they shouldn't bear the cost of that. Development needs to pay for itself. And so, um, and including the staff that it takes to review that. If it weren't for new development, I might not need to be here. You know, that's development necessitates the planning and zoning department. Um, and so we're always looking at that. We're going to be doing that right now. And so our plan is, we, we obviously need to fix this. This is a, urgent. Mm -hmm. But our plan over the next few months is to look at all of our fees and get really into the details, get into the nuts and bolts. What, what are the expenses here? What does development cost? And then make sure that our fees are totally in line with that. Make sure we're not making money on the fees. Okay. We need to cover the cost. And so our plan is, is to bring that to y'all probably around October, right at about the time the new fiscal year starts. Um, and uh, so anticipate a new, new, some new fee schedules coming out okay. shortly. Okay, very good. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Martinez. That new law that was passed, does it only uh, affect residential? Yes, sir. Right. Okay, so our commercial can stay the same. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And we had that schedule in our packet, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes. And yes, Councillor Alcacer. Do you think the legislature is going to come back in two years and complain about this method? <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. It is possible. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes, Councillor Bradshaw. Um, so I know you, you said that this was um, the method that Texas Municipal League proposed. Um, did they give any guidelines or is, have we done any comparisons with other cities as far as, you know, $800 plus 50, 50 cents? I know that's the way you, you calculated to keep it the same, but is theirs comparable or are we in line with, with those? I don't know yet. You know, a lot of cities, I, I, I literally got off the phone with um, Balcones Heights the other day and, and they were saying, okay, what are y'all doing? You know, we want to see what y'all are doing. And, figure it out. Right. Okay. And so, you know, really uh, right now, I think the goal is, is to make sure that we just get fees that are maintaining our current revenue. Um, and so, but definitely, it's a good question. I think what we'll be doing between now and October is looking at what other cities did. Yeah, and maybe, maybe there's some people that did more creative things. I mean, every- Maybe do some benchmarks just to see if they're every, if we're in, in, in line, right? If they're charging $100 and like, why are we-, yeah. why are we Exactly. Yeah. We'll definitely be looking at other cities. And again, too, at the end of the day, you know, you look at other cities, but also look at what our expenses are. Yeah. You know, our expenses may be different in doing that too. So at the end of the day, our fees have got to cover our expenses and then, but make sure that we're not missing out on any creative approaches that other cities might be doing. Sounds good. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else? Uh, any, this is our first read. So if there's any other questions from our uh, residents and guests in the chambers, please don't hesitate to ask. Well, we will bring this back then on uh, August the 6th for a final read as per our charter. Okay, thank you very much. Do appreciate it. Uh, moving then to agenda 8.3, uh, Ms. Caldera is going to present um, the discussion and possible action on music and the park event, which we started, I think it was last meeting. Or a couple of meetings ago. A couple of yes, meetings ago. Yes, that's right. And you got some. You went back and got some more proposals. Correct. And we, they're, they're in our packet this evening. So thank we you came and welcome. To you, thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Mm -hmm. So Good we evening. came to you back in May uh, to request a to see what Council wanted to do as far as events were, were concerned. Um, and you all requested that we go out for an RFP in regards to music in the uh, having a music in the park. We received uh, four RFPs. Um, and each were slightly different. And so uh, staff really couldn't break down or choose one or prefer one over the other. So we decided to um, bring each option to y'all. Um, again, council has the ability to reject all the proposals if they so wish or, or you know, kind of uh, request staff to um, amend each of the options um, differently. The first option was um, a company was proposing 21875 to assist 
um, with an event, um, but that was only going to cover 10 hours. Anything over 10 hours was going to be $175 an hour. So that was the first proposal, um, and in their plan, they didn't have options for booth rentals if we were going to do that, porter potties, entertainment or electricity. They were basically requesting a $21,000 fee for 10 hours to assist in the setup and reconciliation of the account. Oops, excuse me. Option two um, was a $17,500 proposal to assist us with an event. They made it very clear in their proposal though that it was only 17,000 because we were a first time customer. And if we chose to use them again the following year, it would go up by 20,000. So they did make that note in their proposal. Their structure was that the event budget would be about 68,000 for them to, to be able to put on a successful music in the park. Um, but they were saying that the city could generate $31,000 in revenue if we sold tickets for $25. Um, and then there was like a bracket. You could have a VIP section if you wanted to. Um, and then sponsorships and beer sales. And the city could actually make money um, if we went with them and gave them a $68,000 budget plus um, paid them the $17,500 to assist with the event. Option three was um, a special events coordinator to assist with the event for $5,500, and they would need a $27,000 budget. Uh, and basically what they would do is just assist with the logistics of the event, still working with staff. Um, the options were very basic in this proposal. Uh, I don't know if they truly understand um, a con like everything that takes place in a city that we, you know, over time and you know, porta potty, other things of that nature. Oops. And then option four was the most turnkey event. Uh, they were proposing 147,000 for the actual music in the park, um, but they had everything. I mean, that was turnkey. They had security, they had porta potties, they had um, everything you could possibly think of in an event. So they were the most turnkey option. They requested 22,500 to assist with the event. Uh, they also had some additional options, like if you wanted them to come up with an event identity, like the way Balcones Heights does the jazz festival and every year it's like it's got its own identity. Uh, that was an additional 8,500. If you wanted them to handle the print management and design, that was an additional 5,500. Any, if you want to do an hourly rate with them, it was $95 an hour. If you wanted them to handle all the public relations, that was a different, that was $12,000. $12, and then social media management, like creating the Facebook and handling and managing that was 5250. So those are additional options on top of the 22,500. Um, it, it, having the music in, in the park is in line with our C statement. The special events coordinator placed 15,000 as a placeholder in FY20 budget. So we had no idea what the cost is. And again, this is up to council as to the size and the scale of the music in the park that you want. Um, if you take a look at the 4th of July event and remove the fireworks in the parade section and you just had the band and the booze, that's that would be music in the park. Um, and so taking a look, you know, at when we get all those numbers in for the 4th, we'll have a better idea of how much just the entertainment, the booth rental, the porta potties, the stage, the staff overtime, um, I'm sure the chief's probably going to want fencing or some sort of security measures um, there at the park if we do music in the park um, is, is probably what you're looking at. Um, and it's going to be over 15,000. Um, and so recommendation from staff is we hold two major events already. We have the 4th of July. We put in 28,000 for Soapbox Derby. And so we're just recommending two major events. We also hold a lot of other small events like the Christmas tree lighting event, Grandparents Day. Um, you know, maybe there's a dual concept if you all want to hold Soapbox Derby and maybe having some entertainment in the park. But then that 28,000 for Soapbox Derby is probably going to have to go up a little bit as far as the amount. It's probably going to be closer to what y'all spend on 4th of July. Um, we're still waiting on those numbers for 4th, but we usually spend about, you know, we're hitting about 90,000 um, in the expenses in regards to 4th of July. Um, but Ashley will be presenting to y'all the second meeting in August what the actual cost is, um, including sponsorships, 
we just asked for, asked for sponsorships for the 4th of July for most of our businesses. I don't know how many of them would be willing to donate for Soapbox Derby and a Music in the Park um, because we did get some sponsorships for the Soapbox Derby. So, um, again, staff recommends if you all want to do one, maybe eliminate another. Maybe we don't do Soapbox Derby and you all want to do Music in the Park um, or maybe a combination of the two, you know, okay. but again, it's, All it's right. at city council's discretion. All right. Very good. You know, I'm just thinking about when we had a two day jazz festival, when was that? 2014? Okay. That was it time. was $20, $25,000. And it was a turnkey thing and it was wonderful for uh, Friday night and, and Saturday night. It, so now we're kind of like, wow, has, has times changed? And so that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, you know, I think there's a, I mean, thank you, Crystal, for your efforts. Really appreciate it. Um, but I'm thinking that we can certainly maybe look at doing this, if we want to do this, look at it in-house, maybe coupling it with something else. But I, I was, uh, um, if we got somebody to donate their, their uh, I've heard that there may be a um, jazz musician that would be willing to play here in Leon Valley, and, but it would, he would raise money for a cause. Do you know what I'm saying? That was the kind of the quid pro quo. So I don't know. But I mean, there's lots of different options, but mm. uh, I don't really like any of the options that you presented, really. You know, just, we, we opened the, we opened the yeah, bids and exactly. Uh, so. You know, we solicited, um, Rhonda sent out the, 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 the RFP to like 32 different vendors. Mm. Um, we, we put, posted it on public purchasing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, contacted previous vendors that we had used in the past. Um, and these are the four that we received. Mm -hmm. And I remember one year uh, when we had a December, it was rained out in October and we had a de it was moved to December. We had it in the community conference center area. It was much smaller, more defined. It wouldn't probably wouldn't be as expensive as far as fencing and stuff like that. Correct. And so, I mean, again, if y'all want to do a smaller event and then you risk the chance of us turning, if, if it does turn out large, larger, then there's a maximum capacity we would have to turn people okay. away from the event. Mm -hmm. um, so just, you know, okay. keeping that in mind and, you know, right. I don't know. Jazz doesn't draw as big of a crowd typically. I mean, I know Malconi's Heights. Um, I was here for the jazz festival. There was, I mean, it was like a two day festival. One day seemed really good. The other day was like, there wasn't a whole lot of people there um, when we had the jazz festival here. And so, you know, I don't, and I think, the reason for the jazz festival, the 22,000, it didn't, inc there was a lot of stuff that wasn't included in that price of 22,000. And that's why things happened the way they did with that particular vendor, because overtime wasn't considered in that budget. Us purchasing the stuff for the event wasn't considered in that budget. Okay. Uh, like, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, I didn't know all the specifics. Yeah. I just knew it was, I thought it There's was a There's a lot time. of extras, yeah. I think, that people are unaware of when they come yeah. in and they mm -hmm. don't sure. realize that we have to, you know, get an electrician out to run electricity for the booze. We have to, you know, sure. have public works and police and, you know, all the staff that's there. Right. Well, I certainly respect your recommendation, but let me hear from our counselors and Councillor Martinez and our citizens as well. Thank you. I personally agree with the mayor. I don't like any of the... Uh, proposals and a minimum we might investigate is uh, maybe having a smaller band or something in conjunction with the soapbox derby that's what I was uh, thinking now I could see that but mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't like any of these okay thank you anyone else I want option four where we can spend 200 grand <laughs> 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 just kidding for those yeah. <laughs> okay but I think something uh, for if we had something connected to soapbox derby some kind of music that kids would like that age group too so. okay all right so I mean wh whatever the discretion is the council we can look at um, the way the soapbox derby is going or the way we envisioned it to be laid out was to have the strip of cars come down Poss Road if you, those of y'all that attended the soapbox and maybe having like five food booths along Poss Road. At have, Evers, right? I'm sorry, at Evers. Evers, Evers yeah. and, and Poss. And Poss that, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, to have the food booths though lined up on Poss, on Poss okay. Road like we, we did at the last event um, and maybe having like two or three porta potties there. Um, for the soapbox derby, and that's why we estimated about twenty-eight thousand for that event to buy, 
you know, the the railings and the the ramps the and bales all of, of hay. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do a little bit. We're not going to use barrels of hay this yeah. time. It's going to be PVC piping and cones. Oh. Um, and so, and then we'll own them forever after that. Oh, okay. All right. Very so good. So there's there's some things that we're um, doing for the soapbox derby that we won't have continuous cost. Mm -hmm. um, and so it could be that we have more food booth vendors at like the Veterans Park area and have a band set up there and then have the soapbox derby come along pause and, and try to navigate people from the soapbox derby to the Veterans Park area. <coughs> um, I'd have to take a look at the numbers and come back to council um, as to like how much entertainment would be and if if we need fencing in that area. Um, you know, th those added costs uh, to increase the amount of the 28000 Well, maybe the 15000 would cover it. It's that, already that, in there. That very, we just yeah. don't know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Coming? Yes, Councillor Martinez. Out of something, uh, what about uh, if we have a band, maybe have one, for lack of a better word, headliner, uh, a band that, that plays for younger kids, but also go to Marshall, go to some of the schools and they have bands and see if they're just willing to play for, you know, the heck of it. You know, they, they a lot of places are desperate for a venue to show off. We, we, we reach out all the time for various mm -hmm. events to different bands. John Marshall's band is very well known and they don't like to pick up side. They can't do the fourth because they're preparing for their national stuff. They do do our Christmas tree lighting. Um, but that's the typically the only thing. But I definitely we can definitely reach out to the various schools or the various bands in the area um, as a secondary really band yeah. um, to see if they would like to come out for a minimum cost. Minimum cost. I was thinking of football season though on yeah, October twelfth. I mean, so, there's yeah. band competitions yeah. during that time. You so, have but anyway, if you season, you know you could reach out now yeah, while, as we'll they come back ask. to school. Well, we're three months away, so whatever we're we're already starting the logistics for soap. But we just got off the fourth. We're starting logistics sure. for the soapbox mm -hmm. uh, to make every. So if this is a decision council wants to make, it has to be done fairly quickly. Okay. Um, and so. All right. Any other input on uh, from Councillor Charles or Councillor Rodriguez? I would just recommend that you check out uh, schools and perhaps we could find someone that would play minimally cost. But is that is that kind of a general consensus of, mm -hmm. of my colleagues to try to add on to the soapbox derby? Yes. Is that what I'm hearing? Is that what y'all make it more lively? The people who do the soapbox derby have different ideas, I think. I don't. I don't think they're necessarily there for a band, so it would be have to be for another purpose. They they're pretty well focused on what that is. Mm -hmm. So I guess other people want to come out. Everybody likes to listen to music. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but I don't. I don't know if it's necessarily that's the mm -hmm. best time, but it may be. Okay. It, it Councilor Bradshaw. Like, sorry. It seems like the time of year might work well if mm -hmm. you did the soapbox derby during the day and then a band you know, in the evening at the mm -hmm. park or something. But um, my one concern with, you know, the, the idea, well, obviously, besides the, the bids, we're kind of out of line, but um, the um, music in the park, um, we had complaints, or I guess one complaint about how long the 4th of July thing went. Um, the, the music ended at 1030, mm -hmm. and so usually mm -hmm. bands, you know, they want to go late. Uh, the concerts I go to, they don't mm -hmm. start until 10 yeah. o'clock a lot mm -hmm. of times. So I guess it depends on the genre of music and kind of how we set it up. But right. I think this is something we need to kind of do more investigation on or maybe table mm -hmm. it for later. Okay. So I hear that y'all want to add a band to the Soapbox Derby. We can do a little bit of investigation and see. I mean, we're close. I don't know if I'll be able to land entertainment for this year, and it's something we can get ready and gear up for Soapbox Derby for next year and kind of combine the two. Um, but we'll definitely make an effort to try to see if we can um, add music um, to the soapbox derby for this upcoming event and see how it and see how it goes. Yeah, just what about mixing it with, with movies in the park? What about mixing it with movies in the park? I don't know. I don't. I, I mean, don't know when the next mo movies. We in the park. we put it on hold because Mary Bell was out and we kind of were focusing on the Fourth of July and we're gearing up for soapbox derby and so movies in the park is something we just staff has to sit down and discuss, but. Um, it's, we definitely have it budgeted for next year, and we are going to do them. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it could be something that we 
do together. But again, once you start, the movies in the park generates about 30 people at the most, I think I've seen. Mm -hmm. And so when you go from 30 to, say, even two to 3,000 people in the park, um, security and traffic control and stuff becomes an issue. Yeah. So. Okay. Not a simple answer here, nope. but uh, I think we want it, but we want it to work and meld and yeah. So I don't know. So can you just, just can you just come back with some ideas at the next council Maribel's meeting? Maribel's going to bring back an update for the Soapbox Derby for the first week in August. Okay. So hopefully we'll have some ideas for you on that one. Okay. If not, Let's we'll, just do it that we'll way. try next year. All right. Very good. Any other input from our citizens in our chamber before we move on? So I think you've got some direction, Crystal. Is that what I'm, I'm, I'm? Okay, you're good. All right, very good. Okay, well, thank you. If there's no other questions or comments, then we move to citizens to be heard. Object, uh, agenda item number nine. Anyone like to address the council at the end of the meeting? All right. Then seeing no one, if there's no objection, we move to adjourn.